Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're going to be doing a deck tech for Ice Lexi, who is shaping up to be one of the strongest decks, if not the strongest deck, in the Outsiders meta. I'm really excited to talk about this hero. I do know she's been talked about a lot recently. I've seen a ton of videos about her, um, but I think most of them have been centered around a fuseless version of Lexi that doesn't really look at ice too much. Um, and I kind of want to show off this ice version here, mostly inspired by um, Diggle's video. So go check out his videos. He does a great job. He's got two, both about Ice Lexi. Um, I think one just came out today. So go check out Diggle, D-I-G-L on YouTube. He's great. Um, but yeah, mostly inspired by that. Obviously, some of my own takes on it. Um, and so I'm really excited to talk about this deck. I've, I've really enjoyed playing it so far. But before we hop into it, I want to shout out all my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Patrons get access, access to a bunch of regularly updated deck lists like these. Sideboard guides are on these, lots of other tips and tricks on the decks, and they're regularly updated as I test and play them with my team. I also want to ask you to please subscribe. Only about 25% of you who are watching right now are subscribed. Love to get that number up, so thank you so much for hitting subscribe, liking, commenting, all of that. But let's hop right into the deck here. So like I said, this is um, inspired a lot by Diggle's Ice Lexi. It's a more kind of mid-range version where instead of trying to do huge turns with six cards and rain raisers, you're just trying to shoot arrows that actually matter. Like instead, we're not shooting arrows like Falcon Wing. That card kind of sucks. It's just a zero for three go again. And since you have to pay one for most of your arrows with Voltaire, it's like a one for four go again. And that's just leg tap. So we don't want like lame stuff like that. We want cards like Chilling Ice Vein that says when it's fused, all of your attacks that turn make your opponent, opponent discard or pay a resource when they deal damage. That's amazing. So is Blizzard Bolt. All of your attacks this turn have a Frostbite creation on damage effect. Like, that's just amazing. We really want these cards. They make all of your cards threatening, and they're threatening themselves. It's just way stronger than throwing an infecting shot. Like, sure, it's a 1 for 7. It's kind of a 2 for 8 because you're using Voltaire. That's just swing big. Like, that's not a bad card, but we can do such cooler and more disruptive stuff with this Ice Lexi list. And we get to actually make use of her hero ability, flipping especially ice cards up to give your opponent a frostbite. And a free frostbite's really good. Winter's Whale got banned because that weapon made a frostbite sometimes when it hit. This is just a guaranteed frostbite. It's really good. So uh, we're trying to make more use out of the actual hero ability and some of the good elemental cards. Looking at the equipment though, it is a little more defensive, so we don't have Snapdragon Scalers. We just have Perch Grapplers for the two block. Um, I do sometimes use the effect. It's better uh, in the end game against decks that are trying to fatigue you. You can like set up two, one or two arrows in Arsenal, and then you can give them both go again. And then you also get plus one on Vatair that turn with go again. So it's, it's good in the end game against fatigue decks, or it can just be a two block against aggro. Pretty good all around. We've got Tunic. New Horizon is stapled to Lexi. It gives you those two arsenal slots. Um, and then we've got Voltaire, also kind of stapled to Lexi, her best weapon. Um, and then we've got the Quiver of the Rustling Leaves as our main one. This card's pretty good when you get extra blues. Uh, I use it a lot on three of a kind turns where you don't draw that third arrow. Um, and you can, you know, use this to pitch a blue and get that last arrow. Uh, you can, you know, use Voltaire twice, making sure they both have go again, and then turn this into that third arrow. So... It's pretty helpful. Um, it's not as important as like Azalea's Quiver is to her, for example, but it can still be quite good. And then Shock Charmers are just really good. Um, pitching extra blues or extra resources into damage, or if we have our elemental arrows out, pitching them into extra Frostbites or discard triggers. Um, it's just a really good card all around, and it's our only arm slot. It also, having Spellvoid 2 makes it really good into any of the Arcane decks. Um, so it's good all around. It basically blocks for two against anything with Arcane, and uh, it always has a good effect. Um, looking at the main deck here, it's a little... Uh, I have the main kind of setup for aggro matchup. Um, usually when I'm building a deck, I set up the main board kind of for the aggro traditional matchup. So for example, we've got these two red Arctic Incarcerations. This card's amazing, because if you arsenal it, you can flip it up, give them a Frostbite, and then play it, give them three more. That's four Frostbites, um, which is really good into a lot of decks often will turn off their whole turn, um, but it's not as good into decks that are heavy on blues. So we're going to take this out against stuff like Guardian or Icelander, because it's just trading for one card then, and we really want this to trade for like two or three cards. Like, if their hand's all reds or has 
no blues and might maybe has a yellow or two. This is still taking multiple cards to pay for the frostbites um, or just ends their turn. If they can just pitch one blue to get rid of the frostbites, it's not really worth it. So it's for any deck that's, you know, at like 20 or less blues. Um, it's pretty good. It's also an ice card, so it works for fusing. We're running all the reds and the yellows of the fuse arrows. These are like the reason you're playing Ice Lexi. They have really good fuse effects that cause it to make all of your arrows threatening something that turn. Every arrow on damage makes a frostbite. Every arrow on damage, sorry, not even every arrow, every attack, because you can have other attacks too. Every attack, when it deals damage that turn, um, you know, they, they discard a card unless they pay one resource. So both really good cards, um, you know, on fuse effects are really strong here, and especially because they're applying to all your attacks that turn. They're just great, and definitely one of the main reasons you're playing Ice Lexi. Um, obviously, make sure to make them your first arrow of the turn because you want that effect to apply to all of your future arrows if you can. Um, we're running just the red Bolton shots. We've got red drill shots, red endless arrows. These are all just good arrows that cost zero. Um, if we're having if we're having a three card hand and it's a blue, uh, a one cost arrow and a zero cost arrow, that's kind of ideal because we can um, you know pitch the blue Voltaire, shoot the one cost arrow. So then we have one resource left to Voltaire again and then shoot the zero cost arrow. So zero cost arrows are important to have a few of. Um, drill shot's great into turning off equipment. Bolton shot's just a good zero for five, or I suppose one for five with Voltaire. And then, um, you know, endless arrow here can kind of draw a card when it hits, in which case it's a, you know, if you're shooting it uh, with one resource, it can be like a one for seven because drawing a card's worth about three points of value. So that's really good. Other arrows we've got here in red, we got Fatigue Shot. This card's always going to get decent value. Even if it only decreases a four power attack into a two power, it's still dealing five and then kind of gaining you two life. So it's just one resource for seven at that point. Um, so it's going to be good into almost anything. Uh, and then, you know, some matchups it's really good, like into Guardian or Icelander, where it can half uh, like an eight plus into, you know, three or four damage, and then you're saving a lot of life. So. Good arrow, almost always going to save you some life, and sometimes it saves you a lot. Hamstring Shot is basically like extra Frostbites. Um, I would probably rather this be something else, but uh, this is probably the strongest thing in the slot right now. I don't love this card, but it can still be pretty good. I mean, if you're if it's your only arrow for the turn, um, that's still, you know, the one for Voltaire, and then the one for this, you can give it plus one to shoot for six. And then if they uh, are getting taxed one, that's kind of like two for seven value. It's not that bad, um, but you know, taxing an attack can be big, especially against decks like uh, Icelander um, or against Guardians who have like a three cost weapon that they're trying to pitch for perfectly. Uh, often it can be pretty good. So turning a three into a four um, for your opponent can be pretty frustrating to beat. So it's not bad to have, but you know, maybe we'll get a better arrow or maybe there's a better arrow in the slot. And this is probably the weakest arrow in the deck. Um, we have two Lightning Surge main. Uh, we, we used to not play any Lightning Surge mains. Um, they were just like a sideboard card. But this is your best possible, most of the time, it's your best card for Codex of Frailty. Um, the problem with Codex of Frailty is that none of our other arrows have, none of our arrows have Go Again written on them. Um, and, you know, it, it, you often have an arrow in Arsenal. So you want to get a card with Go Again with Codex of Frailty and then shoot that arrow after. Especially because if you have an arrow, a blue, and a Codex of Frailty, you can pitch the blue to load with Voltaire, that one cost arrow or zero cost, give it plus one, and then you can Codex without having to discard. Um, but that kind of gets ruined if the thing we grab with Codex doesn't have Go Again. So basically, we really want something with Go Again off Codex because of how Voltaire works. And so Lightning Surge is kind of the best option. Um, Codex of Frailty lets us grab that Lightning Surge, put it into Arsenal. Um, so, you know, then it's going to get that go again. You can even flip it if you want and shoot the arrow that you had in Arsenal with go again as well. Um, this card is really good and you want to make Codex of Frailty better. But the way the deck was set up without Lightning Surge, uh, the only other option was like Falcon Wing, which, like I said, I don't like that much. Um, so, having two Lightning Surge, you might want all three, um, but at least two to have some good targets for Codex of Frailty. Got the Pulse of Voltaven. This card's great. Sleep Dart, also a good arrow. Most heroes want to use their hero ability, so it's a good on hit. Three of a kind. This is probably the best card in the deck. Um, you know, just drawing three cards for one resource. If you know, often you're gonna draw a blue and two arrows. 
So even if this is your only card in hand, you can use a tunic counter to pay for it, and then you can get a blue and two arrows, and then you can just play all everything. So this card can turn a bad situation into a good one. Um, it swings the tempo a lot, and it's definitely um, probably her strongest big spike turn card. Codex of Frailty, like I said, is a new card for Lexi. Um, it doesn't work with her quite as well as it works with um, like Azalea and uh, the Assassins. Um, it's probably the hardest for her to pull off out of any of the Assassins and Rangers, but we can work around that. Like I said, adding the Lightning Surges makes Codex of Frailty a lot stronger, um, and it certainly is still a strong card. So uh, I will recommend, though, um, you know, with the Ponder, you want to make sure you can flip it and then still have an empty Arsenal slot. So I wouldn't keep any other cards in Arsenal at the end of the turn, just the Pondered card, because uh, otherwise you might run into trouble where you have an arrow face up, you Ponder, and uh, you get another arrow, and now they're both stuck in Arsenal. So um, that's an important thing to note. And then we have basically just a bunch of Ice Blues. They're all quite good. Channel Lake Frigid, obviously an amazing card. We've got Cold Snap and Polar Blast. These are really good cards from Arsenal. You can flip them to give your opponent a Frostbite and then play them to draw a card. Um, they even have pretty decent play effects. We've got Winter's Bite, another good card to flip and play. It's kind of taxing your opponent for two um, on different avenues, which is good. Ice Encounter is probably the best blue ice attack. Uh, it threatens a Frostbite, and it's a breakpoint of four, so that's not bad. I mean, it's not amazing for two resources, but uh, considering you're flipping it to give them a Frostbite, and if it hits and gives them a Frostbite, that's six total value for two, um, which is pretty on rate and an above rate for a blue, so pretty good there. Insidious Chills, um, we almost never play these. Uh, it's just way too resource intensive, and, and you're probably making a mistake most of the time if you're arsenaling it or playing it. Um, it's mostly to pitch and fuse. Um, the only time you want to play it is if you're getting fatigued. So if your opponent is, you can tell they're just blocking and blocking and blocking, and they're trying to make you run out of cards, um, you can put one or two Insidious Chills out, and then on a turn where you fuse, you can just take all of their cards, make it so they can't block, and then kill them that way. So... Um, this is the main way you beat fatigue, is with these Insidious Chills. You've got two, and if you really need it, you can play both of them. Um, and then you just strip a ton of your opponent's cards when you're fusing. Um, so that's kind of like a late game strat into fatigue. Uh, otherwise, it's just an ice blue, which is good to have. And then Frostlock is our only blue card that's not ice, it's an arrow. But this one has a really good fuse, uh, making it so cards and activated abilities cost an extra resource. That's really good into anyone with like defense reactions or oldums. And it has a good on hit into aggro decks where they can't pitch or play cards with base cost zero. So that's the main board. Like I said, it's a little outfitted for aggro with these Arctic Incarcerations. Um, this is kind of the default deck, especially if you don't know what to play, if you're not sure what to sideboard. This is kind of a good place to start. Um, looking at the sideboard here, we've got a ton of stuff for Dromai because that's probably our hardest matchup. So we've got Battering Bolts. They're six power and they're an arrow. We've got Down and Dirty. Um, it's six power, and the important thing is you can block with it from Arsenal, um, which is really good. You can just leave it face up after flipping with Lexi. You still get to use your other Arsenal zone, and then you can pop with it when you want to. So pretty good card in that matchup. Battering Bolt, this, Down and Dirty is probably just for Dromai, but Battering Bolt you're going to play in other matchups, like into Oldham, um, for example, when you're just playing basically all your cards. Lightning Surge, we have the last copy here. This comes in um, you know, against decks that are more defensive. Um, we've got Insidious Chill as an extra blue and another card, obviously, against the defensive decks. Rain Razors. Um, you can kind of tell basically everything in here is for anti-fatigue or anti-dromai because into most decks that are more aggressive or mid-rangey, we can just run this default 60 most of the time. Um, and if we're ever adding cards from the sideboard, we almost, not always, but we almost always just add cards in and we don't take anything out. Um, I think the main card you're ever going to take out is these two Arctic Incarcerations. They are pretty bad into any deck that's like 30 plus blues. You know, if, if they have a lot of blues, this card's not as good. So um, you're going to take these out a lot. But just looking at the rest of the deck, I almost never take anything else out. You're just adding stuff in. So, uh, you know, you, you can start, let's say you're against uh, a deck that you think blocks a lot more. You can take out these two red Arctic Incarcerations. And then you can add in the one Lightning Surge and then the three Rain Razors. So you'll be at 62 cards there. Um, that's good to have a little extra cards against fatigue. The rain razors are a lot better into decks that are trying to block you out because it lets you have really big damage turns. Um, but into aggro decks, they're pretty bad. They are only a yellow. They do nothing on their own, and they don't even block. So 
aggro decks are going to make you block a little more. And when you're blocking, this card's horrible because you need to shoot two or three arrows to make it worth it. And you're blocking way too much against um, aggro decks to do that. So this is really for decks that you're able to not block at all against. You know, if, if you're against a Reinar that's trying to make you go to fatigue, um, you know, this card's going to be a lot better. So we've got that kind of set up. Boulder Trap, this one's just for Oldham to try to put a minus one counter on their Rampart. Um, and then Insidious Chill, this is good for uh, the Icelander matchup as extra blue, the Oldham matchup for extra anti-fatigue cards. Um, so all around there. That's kind of each of these cards. We've got Nullroom Boots for the Wizards, Quiver of Abyssal Depths. You switch this in it once again if you think you're going to get fatigued. It lets you get three of your powerful red arrows back. So um, you can switch the Quivers out depending on if you think it's going to be a quick matchup where they're not trying to block you out or if you think they're going to block you out. Um, you can make that decision there. So that's kind of the deck. I think this is way better, at least in my opinion. It's way better than the Fuseless version. Our cards actually threaten stuff. Like we have these powerful arrows that actually threaten our opponents, and we have all these ice cards that give frost bites. Um, it just feels a lot more disruptive, and I don't think you're gonna do well in this meta unless you're really disrupting your opponent. Um, unless your deck's just busted, but you need almost every deck right now has decent disruption. Icelander has disruption. Azalea has disruption. The Guardians have disruption. You need to have something. You can't just be straight damage. The straight damage decks honestly aren't doing very well right now. You look at ninjas and rune blades, they're not doing great because you just need to be able to interact with your opponent in more ways than just life total. So I really like this kind of um, ice version. It seems really powerful. And uh, honestly, for one of the stronger decks, it's actually a slightly more budget. I'm not saying almost $900 is budget, but uh, you know, looking at like Icelander can be like 1200, rune blades can be over a thousand. This one's not too bad. Um, and I, I think, you know, it, it's a really powerful deck too. So I like the deck a lot. Um, I definitely recommend trying it. I think it's in a good place right now. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you next time.